So it takes grace to walk with God. And it takes grace, uh, grace as well to mature in faith. It takes grace to, to be wise. It takes grace to be patient. It takes grace to be loving. It takes grace to value people that you would likely not value if it were your human choice. So grace is a center or is central when it comes to the issues of faith. And uh, grace is also a phenomenon that humankind struggled with from the, the time they've discovered the gospel. There are a number of things that, that's not my message, but I'm just passing by. There are a number of things that the church have argued about. Do you know that? The church has argued about many things. And most of the time, when the argument got intense, it was the issue that somebody never saw grace accordingly. Let me make an example. The issue of pens, women wearing pens at church. It was the issue of grace, but people thought it was the issue of morals. The issue of makeup. Can a believer put on the makeup? Or not it was argued in the church for many years but it was not the issue of morals it was the issue of grace so church most of the time misunderstands grace in different at different in different generations So when you come to the point where you accept grace, then you, you receive judgment. Mm. You get it? Because grace gives people a chance to grow. Grace gives people a chance to make mistakes, get beaten and learn from their mistakes. Grace does not come with judgment. Yes, it comes with truth. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ came and he was full of two things. Only two things the Bible tells us. The Bible does not really tell us that he was full of the Holy Spirit as such uh, or whatever. Because Holy Spirit and Jesus is one. You know. But it tells us that when he came, he was full of truth and grace. So you get it. It is grace that makes truth possible. You can judge people as much as you can. The more you judge them, the more they get angry. The more they get angry, the more they become stubborn. The more they become stubborn, the more they, the more they become cynical. The more they become cynical, the more they're negative. And it's, 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 it's just bad. It's just chaos. So grace creates order where there's no order. Does, does it make sense to you? So... The best thing you can do as a believer is to walk in love, in truth, and in grace. That's the best thing you can do. And when you do that, you will help yourself not to put your nose in people's matters who are still growing. <laughs> are, you, are you getting this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because... Because, 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 because we're not in heaven yet. And because we're not in heaven yet, then things will happen. Yeah. We're not in heaven yet. Yeah. Sickness will come. Divorce will come. Disappointment will come. Gossip will come. Criticism will come. We're not in heaven yet. So all these negative things will come. So we need, grace says... You know where you are. You know that you are in the world. You are not in heaven. Uh, 
I remember that it was, was it in the 80s? To, those, to some of us who have believed a long time. Was it, was it in the 80s where there was this Jimmy Swaggart story? Yeah? Was it in the 80s? It, I think probably in the 80s. And many people lost their faith in Christ. Because Jimmy Swaggart was their hero. Right? The problem, they did not understand grace. So you get it. So grace helps you to understand that we are in the world and grace helps us to understand that everybody has a strong point and a weak point no matter who they are, no matter how anointed, no matter how gifted, no matter how beautiful, no matter how educated, no matter how rich, no matter how poor. So you get that. So grace helps you to focus on God and accept God as he comes and has, as he reveals himself to you. You get it? But the amazing thing is that God does not reveal himself to us the same way. Yeah, you know why? Because we're different. Yeah, because we have different personalities. Because we are we have different destinies. We have different assignments. So God cannot reveal himself to Isaiah the way he reveals himself to Jeremiah. It's impossible. Hmm. Are you getting that? Okay. I think we'll talk one day about how God relates to us. And then you'll find, you'll find, a, you'll find sometimes that he relates to you totally different than he relates to your neighbor. Or to, to some uh, believer, sister in Christ, or brother in Christ, because God has a different, has a different, uh, how do you call it? Has a different assignment for you. You get it? Yeah. God will send a storm when, <clears throat> will send a storm when Jonah is not going where he sent him. You get it. He'll send a storm. But he, he will treat Peter different than Jonah. <laughs> and he will treat Paul different. So Paul, God spoke to him in a dream. Jonah did not dream anything. Paul, God sent him to preach to a certain country or a certain city. And Paul was fed up because his problem, he was short-tempered. Paul was a short-tempered man. You get that? So, then when you are short-tempered, then he booked the ticket to leave the place and say, I'm done with you guys. You don't want to receive Jesus. You are stubborn and what? And then he left. In the book of Acts, you know, he was he was too, he, he was he, he was going to leave. In fact, not that he left, but the day, the night before he left, God came to him in the dream, and said, "Paul, I've got so many. I've got many people in this city." God said, "Do not go." God did not rebuke him of his temper. You see how God relates. Yeah, the first thing you, the first thing you say, I've been telling you with this temple of yours. God did not, did not relate like that. No, 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 God did not say that. Because certain weaknesses, oh, let me not go there. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Church growth challenge. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry to, for wasting your data if you are watching on Online, we are getting to the message now, right? Church growth challenge. I told you that God is expanding us. And we are going to be expanded. I have never imagined myself as a, as a pastor of a small church. Never, not even once. Not even in my dreams. I am a mega church pastor. And that's what God has made me. It's not pride. It's faith. 
I believe it, I know it, and I've accepted it. All right? So church growth challenge, God wants us to grow. Here's the subtopic I want to talk about today. When you serve, don't hold back. When you serve. Hmm. Uh, we have been born again to serve. So you can serve in different ways. You can serve with your tithing. You can serve with your pledges. You can serve ushering. You can serve with worship. You can serve with dancing. You can serve whatever that you, whatever that you, serve, you, you, you do in serving God. Because all of us are called to serve God. Nobody's called just to sit down and do nothing and just be served. Are you hearing me? So, when you serve, don't hold back. Tell your neighbor, saying, when you serve. Say, don't hold back. Yes, it's important for you to know that. When you serve, do not hold back. Do not hold back in serving the Lord. That's my first point. Do not, do not hold back in serving the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Do not hold back in serving the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, people go full force in everything they do. But when it comes to God, they apply some breaks. When it comes to church, they apply some breaks. When they go for groceries, they can spend as much as they want. When they come to God, they apply some breaks. People just want to behave and to, to, to they, say, they say be civil. They say be thoughtful. They say be, be, be very careful. When we come to church, we want to be careful. But when we do some other things, sometimes we don't care. Yeah? Are you hearing this? I don't want to say it's human nature. But look at what the word says. It says, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I don't like that lagging thing. These leggings, like women, they're wearing leggings or something. Is it leggings? Is that for women or something? Give me another translation. That one has, I don't like that. I'm thinking of a very tight pants and things like that. Okay, never be lacking in zeal. Somebody say, never be lacking in zeal. Never be lacking in what? Zeal. In other words, be zealous. Okay? But keep your spiritual fever, fever serving the Lord. Are you hearing this? So now when it comes to God, do not slack. Do not be lazy. Do not be reluctant. Do not try to control. Do not try to be, you know, you know, to be civil about it. God wants you to go all out when it comes to serving him. So that's what God. So my translation here, the pastor's study Bible, this is what it says. It says, do not, do not be backward in zeal. Right? But be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. In other words, be strong. Do not be weak. Do not be reluctant. Corinthians chapter 15, verse, verse 58. Corinthians chapter 15, verse 38. This is what it says. It says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, of course, be firm and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Are you hearing this? So it says that, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be firm. Somebody say be firm. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the things that you should be firm about, you should be firm in your faith. You should be firm in serving God. You should be firm when it comes to church things. You should be firm. You should be firm. In other words, you are not apologetic about it. You give your tithe without being apologetic. You give your pledges without being apologetic. You attend church meetings or whatever department without being apologetic. You don't allow anybody to speak or to manipulate you or to pull you to whatever side. You are firm about it. Touch your neighbor and say, be firm about it. Yeah, you have to be firm. You have to be firm. You don't need to answer your family. Just be firm. 
they will talk many things about your church, about your pastor, about what you do, about your giving, about your whatever, about your money. It's your money anyway, but they want to talk about it. So the Bible says now, you need to be firm. You need to be immovable. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Guys, the guys on drugs, they don't allow your advisors. They listen to you and then they do drugs tomorrow. They are immovable. People are immovable. Your Islamic brother who is an Islam listens to you. You talk about Jesus, you talk about everything. I, 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 then the next time he is in the mosque. He is immovable. So let us be immovable. Let us be firm. Let us not allow anything move us when it comes to faith and what we believe when it comes to the church of Jesus Christ and the body of Christ and the church we attend. Let's just be firm about it. We don't need to argue. The Bible does not speak about argument here. It does not speak about talking back to people. It's just, just be firm. Let people talk whatever they want to talk and just be firm about it. There may be a new person in the church and they're saying, oh, oh, this church of yours, oh, you, uh, they speak many things. You listen to them and just be firm. And come again. Are you hearing this? So, we have to. By that we are not holding back. Now, uh, 1 John chapter 3 verse 16. The Bible says, the Bible says, by this we know. It says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Then it says, but we have to do something also. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. In other words, for the church. Are you getting this? The Bible says that we should not hold back. If you have to lay your life, lay your life. Did you hear what I said to you? For the church of Jesus Christ, if you have to lay your life, you'll lay your life. You remember the Bible speak about the, 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 the widow. You remember the widow? Gave everything. What does that mean? That's laying your life. She gave everything that she was going to live on at that time. Today, what do we say? No, you have to be, you have to be wise. You have to be, uh, you have to be, you have to be. Uh, you also have to use your mind. But the problem, faith surpasses the mind. Guys, don't you know that? Huh? Don't you know that faith will surpass your mind? Don't you know that sometimes your mind can hinder your faith? Look at Peter walking on water. He walked, he walked on water because his mind was not working. Yeah. His mind was not, no, his mind was not set. His mind was not functional at that time. Only his faith. But as long as he was... As long as his mind was not there, he walked on water. When his mind came and said, hey, what are you doing? He looked at him and said, hey, shit. Hey. When he began to say, oh, oh where, where am I? What did I do? And all of that. When he began to say that, then the Bible says he sank. I'm not saying that don't use your mind. I'm just saying that know when to use it and when to use your faith. So the Bible says that we should lay our lives for the church or for brothers and sisters. It means that God is demanding sacrifice from you. And this is what many people struggle with today. Nobody wants to say, people can say, I can sacrifice for my family, sacrifice for my family, for my mother, for my father, for my sister. Nobody wants to sacrifice for church. In fact, nobody, we are not sacrificing for church. We sacrifice pastors. We say pastors must go to work. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to be your pastor now? 
your pastor has a voice you has a, you have a boss your pastor has a uh, has to report <laughs> you have to report your pastor is rebuked by the he's stressed because he's rebuked by the boss and the boss is very heavy on him and you have the same problem and you and the pastor who's going to pray for who because all of you are suffering the same thing so who's going to who's going to help who are you getting this touch and say don't hold back say when you serve god do not hold back number two when you hold back when you hold back you are in fact destroying when you hold back right you're what destroying in this incense in, in this incident in the in the church setting you are destroying the church you are destroying the work of god or you are causing the work of God to struggle when you hold back. You are causing the church not to achieve and not to be progressive, not to move forward if you are holding back. Right? Now look at this. In the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 9. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 9. So you're going to see over there that the Bible says, one who slack in his work. One who does what? The translation, my translation says that one who is lazy, right? One who slack in his work is a brother to one who destroys. <laughs> it's the same WhatsApp group. What you are supposed to do at church and you did not do, you are a destroyer. In other words, when you slack, you slack in your giving, you slack in your serving, you slack in your availability, you slack in your worship, then how can we move forward with that kind of a believer? How can? Am I teaching this morning? You slack. If there are meetings, you always send a report and excuse that you're not going to be there. How can the department move forward without your presence, without your contribution, without your serving, without your skill, without your talent? You are killing the church. You are destroying. Because if you have come and you have played your role, that situation in the department will be better than what it is because you make a difference so in other words when you slack you are holding back the difference that you would that you should have made touch your neighbor again say don't hold back yeah you wonder how many people are holding back at church people are holding back People are just re reluctant. They come to church, they're reluctant. They see, they see the area of their gifting. They see the area where they can play the role. They see the area where they, where they can contribute and make the house of God better, but they still hold back. They have different reasons for that. There's always a reason why you should not serve God. There's always a reason why you should not play your role. It, it may be even personal problem, but let me tell you this. I'm preaching here. I have personal problems. Can I tell you? I have things I'm dealing with as I'm preaching to you now. I've got things that are concerning that I'm dealing with. I've got things that I'm trusting God for that God will solve for me. But I cannot wait for God to solve those problems before I preach to you. Ladies and gentlemen, just imagine. Just imagine. Every time I have a problem, I sit down and I don't preach. Now just imagine. You come to church. Hmm? We just say, oh, hallelujah. I just do five minutes. I said, okay, go home. You'll go home. You'll not be fed in your spirit. Because my personal problems have interfered with my serving the Lord. Guys, no matter what problem you have do not leave the house of god no matter what is happening in your life it has nothing to do with your serving
Sometimes when we say we understand, we are just being human, we are just nice, but we are not truthful. Yeah, we say, I, I, I know you can sit down and we understand. We understand because you are finished. The way you talk, you are finished. So you are finished. So if I can tell you something else, then you'll think I'm not, I'm not sensitive. But if I can tell you the things I'm dealing with while I'm preaching to you, while God is using me to speak to you, you will be surprised. Uh, where, where's the scripture now? This Bible person is jealous. What's happening? Right. Can you see that? So in other words, he who, who is slothful, he who is holding back, he who is lazy, he who is not engaging, is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. I like this one. You, you are not a small destroyer. You can think that what you are doing is small. Guys, you are destroying us. We need to pray for God to replace you. Sometimes we need to pray like that for God to replace you because we cannot move without your contribution. We cannot move forward. God must just replace you. Touch your neighbor and say, don't hold back. So can you see that when we hold back, then we begin to, to destroy without even us realizing. Yeah, you, you get that? The book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. Book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. 10 verse 4. Look at what it says. He who has a slack hand. In other words, take time to do, takes time to do things. Becomes poor. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. My point is this. I don't want to speak about poverty. When you serve at sickle eye, you are making us rich men. You are making us rich. You are making us excellent. There's no excellence without you. There's no excellence without your contribution. So you matter. So when you contribute, when you are not holding back, you are making us rich. You are making this church to shine. You are lifting the flag of this church. You are lifting the flag of the kingdom. So what you contribute and what you do matters. So you choose to be not a slack hand, but to be a hand of dili a diligent hand. When you choose that, then you are making a difference. Are, are you getting me? And then Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. So the Bible says, because of laziness, because of what? Because of laziness, the building decays. It rots, decays, and through idleness. What is idleness? Doing nothing. Through idleness of hands, the house leaks. Uh, I'm not sure you get what I'm trying to say to you. Hey, guys. If you see anything short here and you can do it, you are, you are the one that is causing it. If you see any weakness in this church and you have <laughs> talent, skills, and gifts to fix it and you do nothing, you are the cause. I'm here, sorry, I'm here to blame you today. I mean, I mean, I mean today. No, serious, I'm blaming you today. I'm telling you. Uh, if you say he was preaching about me, I'm preaching about you. I'm blaming you. I'm here to blame you. Yeah, yeah. God has called me to blame you today. Am I doing the blaming game? I'm doing it. Yes, you. Doing the blaming game today. So now, laziness. Can you see? Because of laziness, the, the, the house what? Decays. It loses its value. It loses its value. The church loses its value if we don't serve. The house of God loses its value if we don't serve, if we hold back. And through idleness, idleness means to do nothing, folding your hands. Through idols of hands, what happens? 
you are creating leaks. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, how many of you love a leaking house when, it's, w w when it rains? Yeah, you are in the house, but ooh, doop, 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 doop. You like that? It's irritating, right? Yeah. That's how you make the church to be. That's how when people come to church will feel. But if you don't hold back when you serve, you are closing the leaks. You are making the environment conducive for people to relax and to enjoy what God wants them to enjoy. Are you hearing this? So, touch your neighbor and say, please do not cause leaks. Please, I trust you too much. Do not cause leaks. Number three, how can you avoid holding back? How can you avoid holding back? Here is the, here's the answer. By following the right people in the church. Every church has bad people. I hope you are not the bad one. Yeah, every church has bad apples. Every church has people say, oh, you are serving, you are so active. We were once like you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the way we are, you are coming to join us. It's just a, it's just a matter of time, you know. We, 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 we were doing like you. And, uh, <laughs> Every church has bad apples. I hope you are not the rotten one. All right. So the book of Hebrews, book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. To make sure that you follow the right people. Have the right. Guys, if somebody is not passionate about his pastor, not passionate about his church, not passionate about his serving, get away from that person. No matter who that person is. If somebody has more, more complaints about the church, run for your life. Ay, ay, ay. Run for your life. If they... Uh, Oh, no, no, today the service wasn't <laughs> by, you know. <laughs> yeah, because, because that's not good for you. Yeah, it's not good for you. Yeah. Don't let people make you to see things you don't see. I don't like that. Like somebody comes to me about my father and he, he makes me to see things. I don't know. I, I, don't, I did not come to see things. I came to be father. I did not come to see things. I, didn't, I did not come for things yet. Yeah? I came for the man. You see, so now, look what the Bible says. It says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those through faith and patience. Inherit the promises of God. Those who inherit the promise of God. Those, those, those who see the promises of God. Those who see that Sikhel I is going to be better. Sikhel I is going to make it. Sikhel I is going to be a great church. Sikhel I is anointed. Sikhel I has the presence of God. Sikhel I has this. You, what do you see? If there's a time I'm preaching, this, this is it. I think 50 is good. Fifty is going to give you sermons that you have never heard in any church. I promise you. Wait, wait, wait for next week as well. It's going to give you things that you have never heard since you were born again. If you were born again for, for 40 years, I'm telling you, even what I'm teaching you now is the first time for you to hear it. You have never heard it. Yeah. So can you see what the Bible says? So follow the people who value the promises of God value the promises of God who know that we are going somewhere who know that God has spoken who know that we've got a greater future who know that we're going to change the world who know that we're going to plant churches in different cities not just of South Africa not just of Africa but of the world people who see the possibilities that what God has said is what God is going to do so follow not those who say hey the worship today I know they there was bad worship today <laughs> not the word he normally preaches but I don't know what happened to him today run for your life that's not good for you are you hearing me Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 
Remember those who rule over you. Can you see that? Guys, people don't like it. The Bible has said it. Everybody does not want to be ruled at church. You are here to be ruled. Did you hear what I said to you? I'm saying you are here to be ruled. <laughs> no, no, no. We have freedom. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. Wait, wait, wait. Free freedom in the country. <laughs> but in the church, you have freedom to be ruled in the church. Your freedom in the church is to be ruled. Yeah. So don't be in church and be unruly. I think, I think this one I need to, to, to emphasize it more. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, let me emphasize it more. If you're in the church, you must be what? Must be, must be ruled over. Yeah, it's God's will. It's God's will. Yeah, you can't be in the church and do what you like at the time you like to do it. No, 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 no. Nah, nah. Here you are here to be ruled. <laughs> you see? So it says that, remember, in fact, rem don't forget those rule, rule over you. I'm, guys, I'm ruling over you here. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm ruling over you here. I'm, I'm really ruling. I'm a ruler. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you come every time I'm here to rule over you. Every time I rule over you. Give me a permission to rule over you. It's God's will that I rule over you. Remember those who rule over you. Who have spoken the word of God. In other words, they don't just rule over you by their flesh and by their cunning spirits. But it's the word of God. So you see, maybe you are comfortable now. By the word of God, spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Can you see that? So you have to follow. If I preach bleeding, you must serve bleeding. If I preach while I'm in trouble and trying to solve issues in life, you must serve while you're trying to solve issues. Follow. Follow the faith. So can you see that? So in the church, for you not to hold back, follow the people who sacrifice. Follow the, the people who stand even when things are not well in their lives, but they still serve God with all their hearts. Follow the people who still give even when they are in debt. Did you get what I'm saying to you? Hebrews. Uh, okay, no. That, that, that's, I think I've done it. 13 verse 7. Now let me give you, before the last one, the last point, I'm left with two points. How can we, why should we, why should we follow the people who are exemplary in faith, who are positive in our midst, is that, number four, if we don't follow right people, if you don't follow right people, you will suffer the spirit of absentism. Hey. There are people who have been worshipping God nicely for years, loving God and crying. Hey. They go. Easter time now at church. Easter time mm, is where they remember. Oh, there's somebody called Jesus. Easter time, once a year. Why? Because little things have happened in their lives. And the love of Christ in their lives and the love of the church and the love of the believers have dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, when the love of believers drop, your attendance will be wanting a church. Many people who've got grudges with the church. If, if, on Facebook, well, I see a lot of them. I don't even answer them. On Facebook, on Facebook, I mean crazy, sick people, ugly. Sick people on Facebook. Speak nothing from the word, but everything from the flesh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They are worshipping uh, on like television. They, they, they watch television. On, they don't want to go to church. They sit down and watch television. The television is their pastor. Television is their, you know, you know they follow the, the faith of the television. 
but when somebody dies in their family, they look for somebody else, but nobody from television will jump out to take care of, of that. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. Mommy, mommy was dead. Mommy passed away. And, and uh, no, the issue is television must help you. Yeah, television must pastor you. Yeah, uh, uh, television must bury your mom. <laughs> is, 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 is it like that? You must bury your father, must bury your cousin, must bury your whoever it is. You see? So, if we don't, then we'll suffer the spirit of absenteeism. Ladies and gentlemen, absenteeism from church is a spirit. It's more than an attitude. It's the will of the devil. He likes it for you not to worship God with other saints. He loves it for you not to be committed. If there are people in the kingdom who are used of the devil is the people who have the absenteeism spirit. An absenteeism spirit, you know, just small thing can just hold you not to come to church. Then the small thing, just just as you've got a oh, I did not wash, you've got a lot of washing. <laughs> it's just just just, just uh, washing. Uh, then you don't come to church. You just, I, I don't have anything to dress, you know. I, you know, I can't dress this, this dress. I dressed it last week or something like that. It's, it's not you complaining. It's a spirit of absenteeism. It has taken over. It just wants you to be absent at church. The book of Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. You know it, but let's talk about it. The book of Hebrews it says, not forsaking, others do not forsake, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Who ourselves? Our believers, ourselves together. As it is a manner of some. In other words, some have started doing that habit. The other translation says, is, is the habit of others. Uh, uh, you know. But exhorting one another. We need to encourage one another to come to church. And so much, the more as you see the day is approaching. We need to encourage each other to come to church. You need to hold your sister accountable. I did not see you last week. It's not the work of the pastor. It's your work. Did you hear what I said to you? Yeah, some of you, you've got people that you have not seen for a long time and you have not touched them. But you, don't, you, do, you know today you are responsible. Yeah, I'm telling you. If you see them on Facebook, tell them, I have not seen you for a long time. Is everything okay? Do you need prayer? Can we, you know, you know, whatever and things like that. You just, just do your work because we need to encourage each other to do what? To not forsake the assembling, the coming together, the, the, the worship, you know, worship together. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. Thessalonians chapter 3. You know, you know, the Bible says, uh, it says, but the Lord is faithful. Somebody say, the Lord is faithful. But the Lord is faithful. Who will, es who will establish you and guard you from the evil one? You see what the Lord will do? Is what? He's faithful to do what? God will always send a word. Before the devil tricks you. Did you get what I'm trying to say to you? You'll always what? Because God wants you to, to be what? To be stable. To be established means to be stable. To be stable means to be committed. To be committed means to be rooted. That's what God wants for your life. Alright? Because it is evil to rob the house of God of your presence whenever it's needed. Did you hear that? God will save you from what? From the evil one. It is evil to rob the, pres the, the house of God of your presence whenever your presence is needed. Guys, because we're not in heaven yet, I understand there are some people who are not at church today because they have reasonable reasons. Right? So I'm not, I'm not trying to be dogmatic or to be <clears throat> to be too strict about it or something. I do understand that. You understand? But 
They are those who have no reasons. Let me give you the last point and I close. In order for us not to hold back and to destroy the spirit of holding back, destroy the spirit of absentism, destroy the spirit that will cause us not to contribute the way we should in the house of God, this is what we have to do. The last point, this is my last point, number five, is that we should serve God with selflessness or selflessly. We should serve God with selflessness. That's how we got saved. Jesus became selfless. He concentrated on us more than him. He gave his life not for him but for us. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Revelation chapter 12 verses 11. Revelation chapter 12 verses 11. I close with this one. The Bible speaks about the type of believers that gave their lives. And the Bible tells us that they overcame him. Who is that? The devil. They overcame him by the, word, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the Bible says they did not love their lives. They did not love their lives to what? To death. They did not love their lives. In other words, they were selfless. They served God and they were selfless. They did not think much more about them, but more about the church, more about Christ, more about the house of God. So when we come to the point where we have to be selfless, how wonderful to have believers who are selfless. Believers who are selfless, they, 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 when you have those kind of believers there, there are no fights, they are, they, 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 there's no jealousy, there's no competition, there are no hardships, there, there's no tension, there's no bad attitude because they are selfless because Christ is the focus in their lives. Are you hearing me somebody? Somebody say selfless. Touch your neighbor and say be selfless. Be selfless when you give. Be selfless when you worship. Be selfless, selfless when you serve. Be selfless when you give your tithe. Whatever that you do, be selfless. In other words, don't have anything in you that rises in you that will temper with the serving of God in your life. Be selfless. Touch yourself and say, I'm selfless. Say, I'm selfless. I'm in the house of God and I'm selfless. I do everything and I am selfless. Because when you are selfless, you will not be offended. When you are selfless, you will not be offended. You will understand that people have mistakes. You will understand people have different attitudes. You will understand some people are immature. You will understand when you are selfless, you will be able to receive other people's weaknesses and mistakes. You will understand because you are selfless. But, but when you are full of yourself, you are oversensitive. When you are full of yourself, you are oversensitive. If somebody steps you on the toe, you feel it and you react. But if you are selfless, they step you on the toe, you understand and you continue to serve God. You continue to love Jesus. You continue to love people because you are selfless. In un selfless does not mean you are not living. It means that your self is not on the throne of your life. Jesus is on the throne of your life. Jesus is on the throne. Selfless people can hardly be offended. I'm telling you, selfless people can hardly be offended. Because as you serve in the house of God, you shall be offended. I'm telling you, I promise you, it's, it's not a, 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 it's a promise. Join any department in the church, you will be offended. I mean, I mean as a pastor, I'm offended. Most of the time. Are you hearing me? And the thing is this, for sure, I offend others as well. We, 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 all of us are offended, even if we offended each other. 
somewhere, somehow. So now being selfless helps us to stick together, to love each other. Guys, do you know the Bible has no demand for someone to change in order for you to love them? Do you know there's no condition? Do you know that love has no condition? No, I did not mean romantic love. Romantic love has a possibility of divorce. But I mean, I mean really God, God kind of love, right? There's no condition. We have to love each other. So in other words, love me with my bad attitude if I have a bad attitude. That I have a bad attitude does not mean you should withhold. There is no condition in love. I mean God's love. Marriage love is conditional. God's love is like mother's love. Hmm. Do you know mother's love has no condition? Yeah. There are mothers who love their gangster children. I mean gangster. Hey. Hey. You'll, think, you'll think twice to love a gangster who kills people. But can I tell you, they are mummies. They love their kids. Oh, make no joke. They, 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 they love their kids. If they go to, to, uh, to, 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 the, to court, uh, in countries where there's death sentence, <laughs> the mothers will roll down and beg the judge to say, please, my baby. My baby killing people, but still my baby. It's a killing baby. <laughs> <laughs> The test of selflessness is love. That's the test of selflessness. When you love less, it means you are more full of yourself. When you love more, it means you have less of yourself. Selflessness is always tested by love. I found out that as a pastor, really, God has called us to love people. I'm telling you. <laughs> you, 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 God. You. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Ooh, ah, hey. God has called us to love people. Hey God, you see, some of them you say, hey God, you say, you say God, oh God, oh hey, I'm telling you. Yeah, it's not an easy job. Yeah. We meet them somewhere, shopping complex. <laughs> you know exactly what they said about you. You know exactly how they gossiped about you. But you still have, oh, how are you? <laughs> still have to give hug and highs and 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 when you want to confirm, then God says, I've, 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 call, I've called you to love. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're in the church, all you need is love. And also, all you need to give is love. That's it. There's nothing else. The love of God, if you say that you love God and there's no evidence of that love in his house, you are just saying it. It's just, it's just a lip service. Oh, I love God. <laughs> it's like people who love God who have no church they belong to. <laughs> they really don't love God. No, no, no. Do you know that God loves the church? Yeah. One of the things that you love God is to be part of the church because he loves the church. Yeah. So you can't say, I just wake up and go everywhere the Spirit leads me in the morning. There are people who are like that. They just wake up. They don't know where they're going to fellowship. If it's Saturday, they don't know where they're going to be the next day. They don't know. 
They say, ah, today I am thinking, uh, oh, that church, oh, that pastor, they wake up, they go there. The other day, they go somewhere else. They're like the tree that is planted everywhere. And it does not have fruits because it keeps on, what's planted keeps on being uprooted all the time to go somewhere else. But Psalm 91, I think it's 91, it says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord, the Bible says they shall flourish like palm trees. The Bible says even in their old age, they shall bear fruits. Never fit. I'm telling you, even old age. Look at us. I'm telling you. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah. You think old age would be saying, no, 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 walking sick. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I'm, I'm telling you. Walking stick is not a blessing. Yeah. We shall make it. We shall bear fruits. Even at old age. Can you see? I want you to understand this. The Bible says those who are planted in the house of the... The Bible says that they shall flourish in the house of their God. And it says that even when they are old, they shall do what? They shall bear fruits. Now look at this. Bear fruits in their old age. In other words, they will not depend on their kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Joe. You did not bring this month. This month, oh, 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 I checked my account. We did not, we did not bring anything. Joe is married. He's got kids and everything. That's not a blessing. So my faith says, even when I'm older, my generations, my kids' kids, will come to me when they are financially frustrated because I will be loaded. Not me going to them. Going to them for what? I guys know, love yourself, man. I know, love yourself, man. Are you growing your child to depend on your child? No, it's not good. It's not good, man. You must change it. No, I'm not saying that when your children choose to be a blessing to you from their will, it's a blessing also. Do you get it? I must balance it, right? Yeah. I don't want you to go home and say, you, all of you, just <laughs> everything you have been doing to me, the pastor said is wrong. Stop it today. No, 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 I'm not saying that. If your kids, if they are good kids, they take care of you, it's good. It's a, it's a blessing as well. Are you hearing that? So am I balancing it out? Okay. Father, we thank you for your word and we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to perform, to do it, and to follow suit in Jesus' name. Amen.